Salty, what's up? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be talking about how, um, this is a part one video. Uh, another video, I'll be showing you how to, um, do a leopard gecko bioactive enclosure. Today, <clears throat> I'm going to be talking about the backdrop and, uh, how you should do the backdrop and what kind of plants you should use. I'm Titus, and you are watching Battle Boys, the side of the lizard side of Battle Boys Wrestling. Stick. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed that intro. Okay, now let's get to talking. I finger he's in this five gallon temporarily temporarily enclosure. And um here is his twenty gallon which is this is just right after I expanded, expanding foamed it. Don't worry, it'll get better. And the other later videos. So now let's talk about which kind of plants you should use. Leopard gecko plants, desert plants, pretty good plants to use. And bioactive tanks are species of aloe. They work really good because, well, they're a desert plant. And leopard geckos are from the desert, obviously. Then we have snake plants. This plant has a bunch of different names, but it's a pretty cool, cool plant. I got it at Home Depot for $6. It's a pretty cheap, good deal. This little aloe I got was like four bucks, I think. It was not cheap. And you could put elephant plants, bushes, elephant bushes, and stuff like that. So. Now let's look, take a look at how I did the expanding foam. I'm going to have to scrape out all the bottom and carve that down. But you see all the wall stuff? This stuff sucks to work with. I know you're, if you're probably here, you've probably seen Snake Discovery and all those professional bioactive builders. You see how like easy it looks for Ed and Emily to just... And then it's like perfect. Yeah. It's not that easy. Don't let that channel don't let channels like that fool you. Okay, they just have a lot of practice. It takes practice because that stuff is annoying to work with. Even my dad told me he he did this cool thing with the doors, which is outside it's like nine o'clock right now. PM, nine o'clock PM. But so bioact bioactive enclosures for like um tropical animals have we always want wet there's tropical plants not desert plants like for desert bioactive enclosures you want aloe prickly pear thornless prickly pear don't put normal prickly pear and then like aloe succulents but there actually still is those isopods and springtails in there because but on the top layer is so dry of a desert bioactive enclosure the under layer like two inches down in the substrate it's still moist enough for the cleanup crew and all those little um invertebrates so now let's talk about the plants to use in these enclosures i like i said wait i already said that i'm a, I'm a moron oh and i got expanding so how to remove expanding foam my mom my parents won't let me do it it got it all over my hand And uh, then, yeah, I got, if it gets stuck in your hair, it sucks. I got it, it was so stupid of me to think I can just pull the tip off with, there's a big old chunk, and it got on my forehead, it got on my hair. So yeah, that's why I sent. Okay, so, let's talk about the difference between, so, tropical, you can so I bet you're wondering like bioactive enclosures are supposed to be humid for um 
they're still like supposed to be human, bioactive. I don't really know what that means, but it, it's like they take very little maintenance. And um, by all the bioactive enclosures, the the tropical ones, the desert ones, they all take very little humidity. No, not hum monitoring. Like they take very little. Like you don't have to be a helicopter and like a silly tank with a bunch of fake plants in it and all that fake crap. Like nothing real in it. I know it's my brother. What? I think my brother's watching SpongeBob SquarePants. <gasps> We're not allowed to watch it. Okay. We're not allowed to watch it. Just, I bet you're wondering, but well, it's such a good show. I hate it. It's so dumb. Luke, shut it off. I'll be right back. I apologize for that. I'll be right back again. Okay, sorry about that again. So, what were we? Oh, yeah, we were talking about the differences, I think between bioactive enclosures, tropical, and um, desert. So the difference is, well, desert and tropical are totally different, which is insane, but, it's not insane, what is wrong with that? Never mind that, but, so, they are, they take very little, like, you don't have to watch them, always, like, you don't, like, oh, yeah, that's what I was saying. I said they they take very little monitoring. Because, like, if, uh, like, if a bearded dragon poops in his fake tank with nothing real in it, you're going to have to clean it up. But in a bioactive enclosure for bearded dragon or ball python poops, the isopods, and, no, not the isopods, that's the springtails. No, yeah, isopods will eat it and feed it to the plants. Not feed it. They like poop. They just turn it into good produce for the plants in the bioactive enclosures. Now, let's get into why you should use certain plants in bioactive enclosures. Let's start off with humid bioactive enclosures. And uh, I'm making a YouTube video. And let's um, why you should use those plants. Cause okay, let's let's use for example if you're gonna build or no set up a bioactive enclosure for frogs, you're gonna want pothos, potho, golden potho, the ones with the really big leaves, and they're like a vine. They make really good platform space and so, stuff to hide under and lay. No, no don't it, don't, don't, don't. You're gonna want a water dish in there for grading poisonous dart frogs, obviously. But yeah, so they cover, they, they have a lot of um, floor space for like, cause the leaves are like is the size of my hand. My hand covered in expanding foam. So, okay. That's why you should use pothos, spider plants. Don't use spider plants, I'm lying. Don't use spider plants. You can use spider wigs. Spider wigs are very simple. Pothos, potho are very simple to take care of. Christmas. Okay, now let's get into why did I say Christmas. Why do I keep misplacing my words? Sorry about that. But so now we're gonna talk about plants to use in desert bioactive enclosures. For bearded dragons, use snake plants like you saw in the earlier video. Earlier in the video, don't use aloe. If they eat aloe, it carries some sort of toxin that's to toxin to bearded dragons. If they eat it, leopard geckos won't eat it at all. They won't try because they know they can't eat anything green. But you're gonna want thornless prickly pear, some kind, different kinds of succulents, and spi or spider plants, or Christmas cactus for bearded dragons. For leopard geckos, you can put air plants in there. You can put spider plants. You can put aloe. You can put all kinds of succulents. So this video, this is a video is a part one. This is bioactive. How to do a correct bioactive desert setup this is part one of how to do a leopard gecko bioactive setup i hope you enjoyed like and subscribe bye and don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified when i post another video